just under one minute. But that's far from impressive compared to how long it takes for any of the world champions to solve it. Speed cubers can actually solve the Rubik's Cube in under 10 seconds. It requires a lot of practice and memorization and really fast fingers. This is an example of some of the fastest times officially recorded. Can you find the fastest person on the table? Lucas Etter, a 14-year-old from Kentucky, US. And he has the world's largest record in 2015 for the fastest time to solve a Rubik's Cube, breaking the five-second barrier for the first time ever. But let's go back to the leaderboard here. I'd like you to think about how you found the fastest player. I know that sounds very intuitive for us humans, but what if we wanted to write a function that finds that smallest number in an array like this? So let's have a look at how our brains actually work when we're searching for the smallest number in a list of numbers like the leaderboard, for example. Here I have this array of doubles called speed that has these numbers in it, indexed from 0 all the way to 6. To find the smallest number here, I just have to go through them one by one and just only remember the smallest number I've seen so far. I'll store the smallest number I've seen so far in this variable called min for minimum. Let's start from the very beginning. The very first value is 7.85, and that's the smallest we've seen so far, so that goes into our minimum variable. And then we move on, and the second value is 7.32. So I ask this question, is speed of 1, if, is this cell here smaller than our minimum? Yes, it is. So I update the minimum to get the new value in it, 7.32. And then I move on, and then I ask myself this question again. Is speed of 2 less than the minimum? Speed of 2 here is 4.9, and the minimum is 7.32. Yes, it is. So I update the minimum with that new value here, 4.9. Moving on, and then I ask the question again. Is speed of 3 less than minimum? Speed of 3 is 6.22 and minimum is 4.9, so obviously it's not less than it anymore, so I don't update minimum. I move on, and then I get 5.4. 5.4 is not less than 4.9, so I continue to move on, and then 7.3 is not smaller than 4.9, so I continue moving on. 5.19 is also not smaller than the minimum, so I end up going through the entire array, and the minimum value that I found was 4.9. What we've just done here is called an algorithm. It's basically following a systematic number of steps until we find the correct solution we want. Thinking that way helps us write in code. So let's see how we can implement this in Java. Assume we want to write it in a function like so, a function called search that accepts the parameter an array of doubles called speed, and returns a single double that is the fastest or the smallest value in this array. So the parameters is the speed array, which is an array of doubles, and it returns a double which is the fastest speed found. I'll just leave this here as an example for us to trace later. The first thing we need to do is get the length of our array and store it into a variable called size. Any array dot length calculates how many cells is in that array and returns an integer number of that value. In this case, our size is actually 7, because we have 7 cells in our array. The next step is to create this variable called min, which remembers the smallest number as we go, and we're going to initialize it to the very first item in our array, which is speed of 0. So after this instruction, the variable min would have 7.85 in it. If there was another array passed in as a parameter, then it would just grab whatever value is in the very first item. Then, we actually need to use a loop so that we can iterate over this array. Our loop counter is initialized to 1, and our condition is i less than size. That means that our counter would count up from 1 all the way until just before it reaches size. And the increment is just i++, which means we're adding just 1 every time. The reason we start from 1 is because we've already assigned minimum to the very first item. So we need to start comparing from the item with index 1 
all the way till the end, which is size. So what do we do? Inside the loop, we ask ourselves the question, is this value at that particular time in the loop smaller than our minimum value? We do that with an if condition. So we say if speed of i is less than minimum. Speed of i is pointing to a particular cell in the array depending on the value of i. So it starts by pointing at this particular cell and then it moves on to this one and so on. And each time we're comparing it to minimum. If it is smaller than minimum, then we update minimum to get that value inside speed of i. Once our loop is complete, which means that we've visited every single cell in the array, we can just return minimum. Because at this point of time, we're certain that minimum would have the smallest value in the array. 